Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode we're going to look at list building and we're going to start a sort of a, a mini series sort of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a list from scratch, we're going to play a game with it and we're going to see how we tweak it and in the next video you know, for this series we're going to look at playing another game with it, tweaking it again and just show a little bit of continual improvement, you know, how we want to look at lists what we want to improve going forward, how to play differently, and just a general idea of how list building works in Moonbreaker and what you need to adapt to. So, some of you may know, some of you may not. I've been playing Moonbreaker since the very, very beginning. I was in some of the playtests before it was even in the uh, early access, and so I've got a lot of time invested into the game. However, I've been taking a bit of a break recently. I've recently come back again, so I've been playing some, but not as much as I have been. So the current meta, I'm very much out of the loop. Now, as much as I'd like to be in the loop and tell you know all the meta things and how to do it, I've got a really good understanding of the mechanics of the game and that sort of thing, but what I want to do is figure out how to just sort of improve from that point, how to get used to the meta again, and figure out you know what's really needed to push the lists over the edge. So the first thing I want to do is look at the captains. So we need to create a new roster, and we need to pick who we want our captain to be. So. I know that Astra is very strong, but Astra is likely to be getting a rework in the near future, or at least some sort of changes potentially on the experimental server. So we're going to look at doing something different, and I'm thinking I'm leaning towards Zuna or Zax. So these are two of my favourite captains anyway. I love the control style of Zuna, but I also love the movement and sort of the move blocking, the manipulation of the battlefield from Zax. So I think I'm going to go with a Zax list. It's something that I've not done in a while, and honestly, I have a lot of fun with it. So that's our captain, and when looking at crew, what I want to do is I want to pick a good set of, yeah, I want to pick a good curve. I want to have a variety of things that synergize well together, and I want to be able to put out enough damage while also sort of having a general game plan and some sort of survivability as well. So, in the way the format is at the moment, most of the time games are going to be decided by who can kill the opponent's captain. I don't necessarily want to have to rush to it. The way I prefer to play is to basically take out the opponent's crew. Yeah, as often as I can do, so that leaves me with more crew on the battlefield so when I do decide to turn on the captain I can deal with that sooner rather than later. So the first we want to look at is one drops. Now at the moment it almost feels like you're making a mistake if you don't play a one drop or at least something to play in the first turn. If you go first you get one cinder, if you go second you get two. So we need to sort of figure out, oh, sorry leadership rather, first turn you get one leadership, if you're going second you get two leadership. So we need to either be able to play a one leadership unit or have something solid to play on two, which to me usually leads towards playing two different one cost units. So with Zax, he's ranged, he's good with sort of, uh, basically he's a ranged character, he works well with Deadeye himself, Deadeye gives a range buff, so that's a pretty straightforward choice. And then we've got Fixer, who is pretty solid, but a little bit tanky, but not sort of very maneuverable, but gives the option for additional Cinder in later turns. Or we've got Maximus, who for me is going to be the easy pick. Maximus is still one of the best units in the game. Just pops out, shoots, and pops back again. So then we need to choose our follow-ups here. So with two Cinder, or two leadership rather, you have to forgive me for calling it Cinder, it used to all be one resource. And even though I've been playing with the leadership version for a couple of months, I still keep calling it Cinder. So we've got Axel Pyro, who does really good AoE damage. It's very good with Zax if you pull someone into a little... You pull something to the grav disc, so I'm considering Axel Pyro for a similar reason I'm considering Teutonia, but I don't want too many units that cost Cinder to activate their abilities. So I'll consider that for now and then see what else we've got from there. It's probably going to be Teutonia. I think these two are reasonable to have both because we're not often going to be playing both of them at the same time. It's going to be situational as to what we play, so I think that's very reasonable. Personally, I like following a curve. You, when I'm learning a list or figuring out what to do, I like following a fairly set curve. So, not necessarily playing the same thing every turn, but being efficient with my leadership usage every turn and make sure I get the most out of it. For that reason, I'm going to look at Arya next. I think Arya is a very, very powerful unit. Uh, just the ability to deploy anywhere on the battlefield is great. Uh, the same with hit and run. Ambush is a very, very powerful mechanic. So I think I want to take those. I'm going to start with both and consider maybe cutting one later on if we feel like it. Now as we get further on, so Taria does allow for a lot more damage output. She can put you know, uh, double attack onto Aria, deal 6 damage. It's pretty decent. She, it's amazing she costs 3. She's gone from 2 to 1 to 3. She's all over the place. But again, it's another Cinder usage. 
but what are there other options? You know, I think it's probably Taria, and if we're doing Taria, I get one of my favourite four drops is Shrapnel. So Shrapnel's an AOE shotgun unit, very, very powerful. And what else can we do here? So having some AOE, like Shrapnel, is very good with Zax. Things like Peacemaker Balam, also very good to stun crews in an area if you can pull multiple crews together can be very good, but I'm not sure. I think we've got too much cinder, cinder usage at the moment. Turncoat could be an option. It's powerful. A bit frustrating to play against if you're, uh, say, if if you're on the other side of it. Oatly is good. It puts things back up onto the, uh, back up into the sky. I think with the AOE that we've got, so we've already got shrapnel for AOE. Uh, Taria to make it hit twice. These two aren't AOE, but Detonia is. Axel Pyro is. I think this is a good list for Flurry to be a good finisher here. Flurry can help us just, you churn through a bunch of units. So that could be a very nice little approach there. And then, because we've got, let's see, where was our, our Cinder cost skill? So, three Cinder usage there, two Cinder usage there sometimes, two there, two there, and two there. We're not too bad, but we do maybe want some additional Cinder income. So we can choose basically between wherever they've gone now. Tona Mystic Manteo is a very good one. It gives It's one of the only units that actually gives two Cinder per turn. Or we could see if there's just anything else that really works. I quite like Noxy at the moment as well, but I think we want something defensive, some way of just sort of healing us back up. There's always the old school choice of just playing Neck Divine and just letting it sit and heal everything in an AoE, which is nice, but I don't think it's Toner. It could be Stitchy, but again, Stitchy kind of just messes up the maths a little, a little bit. So what if we want to stay more aggressive? With AoE, feel bad can be good, but again, large cinder costs. But you know what? This is probably one of those things that we're going to end up cutting, but this is something I want to try. So, here we have it. Our very first Zach's test roster for this loadout. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and find a PvP game, we're going to see how it works, make some tweaks, and just try and adapt this list for the future, and you can do the same. So, important things to consider, like we said, is your cinder curve, having a game plan, so ours is going to be some sort of AoE but generally range damage. We've got hit and run in there just purely for utility, it's not going to be, you know, the most synergistic with our game plan, but putting it down and being a threat to something that otherwise you couldn't reach is great. And then most of the other things fill the range and AoE game plan, so this is going to be what we're going to test. We'll take it into a PvP game and hopefully have some fun there. So. If this is something that you're enjoying and you want to see more of this content, please do like, comment, subscribe, join us over on Patreon. The one thing I want to say is that since the Bricky video the other day, the last couple of videos, and I've been doing a bit more Moonbreak content and promoting it, the amount of subscribers I've been getting has been shooting up. We're so, so close to hitting 200. I would be absolutely love it if this video could be the one that tips us over the edge. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you're considering maybe doing it, it would make a really big difference to me if that's something you'd be willing to do. But for now, I'm going to pause the recording, and I'll see you once we're back in the game. Okay, we have found a game. We are against Eremith, a level 9 player. So Eremith, if you end up seeing this, really, really grateful for you to being our opponent. Welcome to the community. Level 9 is a fairly new account, so you might be playing for a few days, maybe a week or so. Not quite sure why we're not loading any uh, captains in. I want to see Eremith's paint job. There we go. Ooh, nice extilio. Oh, this is my uh, monochrome Zax, in case you're wondering. So, for anyone who hasn't seen any of their paint schemes, I'm not exactly an artist, but I saw someone doing a, a monochrome paint job once very early on, and I thought I'd love to do that for something and try and see how good it looked. So this is my monochrome Zax there. They've got... Okay, so we've got a colour scheme over here. Someone knows what they're doing. So, I mean, we can just... We can try and just pop over, make it harder for Maximus to hit us, so down here, and get a half decent shot onto Extilio. So that's what I'm going to do first. We missed anyway, but that's fine. Uh, I'm going to put Deadeye back here. And you know what? Let's pop our own Maximus just right on this corner here. Hold that objective. And then we could grab Disc back. To be honest, I think I might just do that. Grab disc ourselves to safety. And make it harder for them to take this uh, this point from us. 
So if they're going to move out with Exilio, they're not going to hopefully have too many good lines of sight here. Yeah, there we go. So 40 odd is the best unless they go down here. They will have. Yeah, they have got a good shot there. For some reason, I think Maximus's move speed has been buffed since since one point where I looked at it. Because honestly, that was a shock to me seeing quite how much damage came out of that. So the question is, are they going to play anything that's worth trying to kill? Because we've got access to six damage. Okay, so they've got a broken vengeance. So that's something we don't want to try and just rush into. So what do we do? Just look like you're thinking. It's probably first of all just. Oh, I forgot my lucky cravat. It might even just be focusing on exterior. In fact, I think it might be. So if we do that first. Okay, we've got one. I was worried we weren't going to get any then. If we pop over here for the first one. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Deadeye over here. Because Deadeye's line of sight is going to be worse. So we'll Ozos onto Deadeye to get that shot off. And then same here. These misses are slightly painful. Uh, do you know what? I actually think Detoni could be really good here to shoot things out of line of sight. And then, because of the situation that we're in, they haven't got any movement things, so I'm going to just pop a sleeper mine down over there. And I think that seems pretty reasonable to start getting a bit more damage. The fact Exilio only took like a couple there is pretty unfortunate. Okay, so if they don't move too far away... We could just kill Maximus next turn, quite possibly. Yeah, Broken Vengeance shooting the mine is pretty much what we wanted. We don't mind losing that whatsoever. Because depending on what they deploy and where they move, we might be able to just... Okay, if they're moving aggressively, we might even just want to go all out on him. Especially if they deploy something short range or... Okay, it's Arya. So Arya isn't short range. Arya is a definite threat. But it could be that we have something to do here. Got enough cinder, so can we grab disc? So we can grab disc both of these together. Which is pretty nice. And we have to decide what we want to shoot. So, Deadeye has 57 at the moment. Okay, well we know we're bringing Tetonia out. Tetonia is going to be grenading both of these without any shadow of a doubt. Which means that I'm probably going to want to use this over here to try and slow down their Maximus. We can get to 90 over that angle. Dead Eye can get to 80 on here. So if Dead Eye takes this and hits, there we go. We might be able to get a 90 here without being. Okay, forget about here, we might be out of range of Exilior just about. Especially if we pop a sleeper mine down. Inconvenience him quite a bit. And to be completely honest, I might just hit and run over here. Because if they don't come and deal with hit and run, we just win that trade eventually. So we are falling behind on points, I am aware of that. And I think Maximus could potentially die. Yeah. But that stopped Exilior doing anything. So Hit and Run is now out of range over here. But that's fine. We can deal with that. I actually think this is the point where we just turn and... Oh, is this a jailbreak? So the thing with this being jailbreak is that actually it doesn't stop us doing anything. We can just pull them back. Pop more mines in. Okay, there's an Antios as well. So we can potentially pull multiple things of theirs together. And just... We want to bring out an Axel Pyro or a Flurry in that case. Uh, we're going to be at Flurry turn next. So Flurry's passive won't be active immediately is the issue. So if we move over here first, we probably want to... Oh yeah, we can't move quite yet. So if we shoot this first... Oh, I thought that would move us out of the way. Well, that's a shame. Uh, can we get all of them without getting... That'll do, because that doesn't get Deadeye. So, we'll go for this here. Pop... In fact, we'll pop a Sleeper Mine down first, just outside of melee range. Head up this way. 
lob the explosive over here on these three. Uh, we can move block here. And to be honest, this looks like it could be a really good shrapnel opportunity. So if we just pop shrapnel down, say, here, this could be relatively safe. And we're going to bring hit and run over this way. So, again, we're struggling on points. What I'm thinking is that it doesn't seem like we're doing quite enough damage. Oh, I keep forgetting Shrapnel's got loads less health now, actually. And everything's more lethal. This was a bad play. Shrapnel can be just destroyed here. So this is funny, because this is what I was saying earlier about trying to pick the right targets to go for. I haven't done that, because I haven't taken out the enemy crew. Which means now they're getting an advantage. Because I spent some turns chipping away at the enemy captain... I'm now behind because they're essentially going to have a lot more damage available than we do. So between this spin here, the hit, and then the Aria shot, we will be dead. So this will be gone unless they sort of block their own uh, avenue or something like that. Hey, Tipu. So the thing with Tipu is he's very powerful, but Tipu does have one big downside in that you can, if you play well. You can often kite it very easily. So hit and run can kill here, and then get moving again. Detonia can throw a bomb over this side. We are going to struggle here. We are missing that longevity that I wanted. Okay, the fact they didn't go for... They didn't attack either, so... This shrapnel was a pretty big mistake in my opinion. So the question, question is, can we take out Tipu? I think it's possible. So if we come up here first and lob the explosives, is there a way to just hit these two? Perfect. So shrapnel having the AOE, we want to make sure we try and get to an angle where we can hit both of them, but maybe not us. So we are going to hit Deadeye here, so Deadeye may as well get the shot off first. We've got enough, yeah, we can pull Deadeye away. Or we can, yeah, we'll just pull Deadeye away up this way. Actually no, because that's not going to matter either way. We're going to hit everything. Let's pull these two this way. There we go, now we can shoot that. Use our range attack here. We'll try and block Tipu in place with a sleeper one. We'll move back this way. We'll chain this guy to death. And then we'll block over here. And we didn't play anything. So we did make a small mistake there. We are going to be blocked in here. But this is... This could be worse. Tipu can hit and kill something nearly. So coming soon is going to be the turn where we have to start looking at dealing with things over here. So, um, I'm starting to think Stitchy would have been good. Okay, there's their flurry. The interesting thing about them having a flurry is that potentially we can abuse that to just n nuke their captain down. Because we've got Grav Disc. So, yeah, this is fine. But if we can pull those together and start hitting them with AoE, then maybe, just maybe, we have a chance. We could definitely kill Tipu if we need to. Oh, that... 23%, so they're not going to have a good chance doing it, but it is possible. Okay, good. Okay. So if they're moving here, this grav disc could be huge if we get Flurry up here. Not quite. So. What if we move back over here first? We'll grav disc these all in together. Preferably all the way up here. Try and get Flurry into range of them. If this doesn't pull us, how is Flurry going to hurt us? Okay, there we go. Perfect. So we can just... Step back here and shoot Tipu. This... Lob explosives onto this, which kills 
them all. It, it does damage us. Not not denying that. But we can shoot here. And start moving away, and we need to get our own units out. So we're gonna pop our own flurry on there. We'll pop Axel Pyro over here. And we're gonna pop Aria onto their area. And just start competing over there. Okay, so we're getting there. We're not out of this yet. We're gonna struggle to deal with Flurry. But at least the Aria Wars over here are gonna be interesting. They can probably just come over and deal with some things here. Okay, Sentinel's interesting. This could be something that Flurry deals with well. If this is double Flurry, we can go mad. Because that doesn't attack back. We can Flurry in here and just chain everything to death, especially if they move down here. Oh, please move down here. And we can just chain all the flurries into each other. I love flurries working together. It's one of my favourite things in Moonbreaker, is just watching flurries go intensely silly on each other. Okay, so... So we may need to have Deadeye be a sacrificial lamb here. Okay, where can we move? Can't really move anywhere. So what if we just used it all up here? Grenade. I really feel like we're close to getting this down. Right. Deadeye, you are a sacrifice. I guess you're hitting here. Oh, we're blocked in. So that was a waste of time. So we're going to pull these three together, possibly with this as well. We're going to move over here. Explosives, everything. Look at that. So I believe we're safe here. Otherwise I messed up massively. <laughs> what a fantastic turn that is. Put feel bad over here. Uh, where's our captain? Sleeper mine over here. To block him in. Uh, we'll ozos ourselves, sure. Just so we don't waste resources. So they can go for turnco, but we can probably kill turnco. They've only got two crew left, and we've got access to six. No, six in total. We've got five Antaria left to go. So if they go for this, we are we're just going to kill it. So. We can just feel bad on it and then poke. And then I think we've just got all the AoE we could ever need. This is great. I mean, there's a chance we could even just end this, potentially. I'm really curious. Do you know what? I think we try and end this. I kind of wish we had a heal, but... What if we just... What if we just go for it? Fire left gun. Fire right gun. We'll just pop in and flame of these. Get the twirl going. And then pop in here. Go for it. Okay, I mean, this is just going to kill it. Kill ourselves if you do this, so. What if he's still on us here? Go for that. And move over here. Uh, we'll just go for this first. Get that done. So you can attack us back. We'll shoot over here. We've got nothing left to do except deploy Tari Arsenal somewhere. It's fairly inconvenient for them. Let's just move block them. Make it as hard as possible to get to us. They can take our Aria, but I'm pretty sure we can kill Exilio from this point. They give these down to two. Oh my goodness. Oh, they this lasts a whole turn, so the burn did three. There we go. So this. I'm not. Don't get me wrong, this has worked. I feel like we've probably got this game. It feels very unlikely for our opponent to come back from here. But there are things that I don't think work. So we're going to be looking at that in just a moment. Hopefully our opponent is just going to 
see how City has got flurry form thing was fantastic. There we are. So they're doing a good job. Aramith, I want to say GG, well played. You've done yeah, a great job here. It was looking close at one point. We had a couple of things with double flurry that really just let us go off a little bit. And now we can just flame into death. There we go. Job done, and we have killed the enemy Exilium. So, that was a fairly good game. I think I've sort of explained my thought processes, why I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I think it worked out you know, well most of the time, but there were a few times where I felt a little bit on the back foot. You know, we weren't ahead for a while. We were focusing units, uh, sorry, focusing the captain briefly instead of focusing crew. So, what I want to do now is in preparation for the next video, is I'm going to look at what I'd want to change from here. So, funnily enough, I think Dr. Feelbad worked. I'm not prepared to get rid of it yet, although I'm not convinced it's right. I think hit and run while good and fun may not be the right unit for this list. And interestingly, I don't know if Taria is either. I think Taria is a bit difficult to really get the value out of. There's only a couple of things that work, so she doesn't work well with Axel or Detonia or I don't know, Flurry at all or feel bad. So there's a lot of anti-synergy there, so it's just her left on the battlefield. We might not be doing so well. So what we do want to look at is what would go well with this AoE list and what were our weak points. So we did struggle to survive, so I could consider putting in Stitchy. We've got a few units like Flurry that would be but you know, would benefit significantly from having additional health as and when it's needed. And I think that lack of early game, so I'm, there's two things I'm considering. There's Torian Guardian, so Torian's a really good defensive unit. It's obviously not uh, melee, it's range. Uh, sorry, not range, it's melee. So it doesn't quite fit with what we're trying to do, but also there's Broken Vengeance, who's just a very powerful, you know, high damage and sometimes slightly combo -y unit. So I think what I'm going to go for next time, I'm going to try and go a little bit cheaper. We'll take Broken Vengeance and Stitchy. The plan for Stitchy isn't ever going to be to play at turn one. It's just going to be to play when we've got a gap, or if we really need healing, we'll find another way of sort of fitting that into the curve. And I think that's going to be our sort of adjustments for next time. So it helps us with the healing problem, where we are struggling to, you know, we basically, they could have sort of rushed our units down. They were starting to lose units we didn't necessarily need to. We could have easily found a space to fit a stitch in and play something else. And then we didn't really use Hit and Run to great value. We only managed to get killed because of their Broken Vengeance. So I wanted to try something a little bit different. We've already got some ambush here. And then Broken Vengeance itself is that just early sort of anti-pressure thing. It works really well with Feel Bad because you get more triggers off of it. So I think, all in all, this looks like a fun second iteration for the list. And iter iteration? Iteration. And so that's what we're going to be trying in the next time we do one of these videos. So there's a bit of the thought process behind how I build lists, how I play them, how I'm going to sort of adjust them. This is something I've often done off camera, and I've usually done it you know, before I make a video or something like that. But because there's so many new players and so many sort of people learning the game itself, I wanted to share that with you guys. It's a suggestion from Coralla, a member of the community, so big thanks to Coralla for that suggestion as well. If you guys have enjoyed this, like I said, we're really pushing to hit 200 subscribers. It would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe. But any comments, likes, any Patreon supporters, it all means a lot to me if that's something you can choose to do. But if not, don't worry at all. The most important thing is to thank you so much for watching and have a good day.